Jeff Bezos' private space flight company, Blue Origin, has successfully launched and landed its new Shepard vehicle on its latest NS-14 mission. The 18-meter-tall New Shepard propulsion module, carrying a crew capsule atop, launched on Thursday afternoon from the company's launch site in West Texas. At about two and a half minutes after liftoff, before reaching its maximum altitude of 107 kilometers, the capsule got separated from the rocket. Both the capsule and booster then began their descent down to Earth. The booster restarted its onboard engine and landed safely back on the ground roughly seven minutes after the launch. Meanwhile, the capsule descended safely back to Earth via parachute, where it then came to a gentle landing back on the ground. While New Shepard has flown 13 times before, this mission saw the capsule fitted with upgrades for the astronaut experience as the program nears human space flight. The upgrades include improvements to environmental features, such as acoustics and temperature regulation inside the capsule, crew display panels, and speakers with a microphone and push-to-talk button at each seat. The mission also tested several astronaut communication and safety alert systems. The mission had a dummy human on board, nicknamed Mannequin Skywalker, who sat in one of the capsule's six seats. The new Shepard launch vehicle is being developed by Blue Origin as a commercial system for suborbital space tourism. Even though many scientific experiments have flown on the vehicle's test missions so far, New Shepard is yet to launch an astronaut into space. A SpaceX Dragon cargo resupply spacecraft returned to Earth from the International Space Station Wednesday. The Dragon CRS-21 mission, which was launched on December 6 atop a Falcon 9 rocket, carried 3,000 kilograms of supplies and science equipment to the ISS. The CRS-21 mission was the first to use the new version of the Dragon cargo spacecraft. After a 37 days long mission, on Tuesday, the upgraded vehicle autonomously undocked from the space station for the first time. The CRS-21 Dragon brought back to Earth various scientific experiments, ranging from heart tissue cells tested on the station to fiber-optic cables produced in microgravity. It also brought back 12 bottles of red wine flown to the station in late 2019 by the European company Space Cargo Unlimited. About 35 hours after undocking, the spacecraft splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico on January 13. While previous Dragon cargo missions have ended with parachute-assisted splashdowns in the Pacific, the newly upgraded version of Dragon is designed to land in the Atlantic Ocean, closer to the Science Processing Center at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Within six hours after the splashdown, the cargo from the Dragon was transported by helicopter to a lab at the Kennedy Space Center. NASA fired up the core stage of its massive SLS rocket in a hot fire test for the first time on Saturday. Even though the engines lit up smoothly, the test ended prematurely when the engines shut down earlier than planned. During the test, the four RS-25 engines in the SLS core stage fired for a little over a minute while anchored in NASA's rocket test stand. The team had planned to have the engines fire for approximately eight minutes, which is the amount of time the engines will burn during the actual flight. During the test, flight controllers could be heard referring to a major component failure related to engine number four on the SLS booster. At about the 60-second mark, cameras caught a flash and a protective thermal blanket on the engine, though its cause and significance remain to be determined. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of dynamics going on at the point in time. We did see a little bit of a flash come from around the interface between the thermal protection blanket on engine four. According to a NASA statement, the onboard software acted appropriately and initiated a safe shutdown of the engines. According to John Shannon, vice president and program manager for SLS, the engines needed to run for about 250 seconds to get the data they needed. Since the test was stopped short of 250 seconds and before the teams could gimbal the engines, exactly how much data and how confident the teams are in the vehicle is yet to be determined. NASA will conduct the next round of hot fire tests after figuring out what went wrong on Saturday. The Federal Communications Commission has recently granted SpaceX permission to launch Starlink satellites into polar orbit. In an FCC order issued on January 8, the Commission granted SpaceX the ability to deploy and operate 10 Starlink satellites at an altitude of 560 kilometers and at an inclination of 97.6 degrees.
SpaceX will launch the satellites to polar orbit atop a Falcon 9 rocket on the upcoming Transporter 1 dedicated rideshare mission, targeted for January 21. The launch will be SpaceX's first rideshare mission for 2021, with the company taking satellites from several entities to a sun-synchronous orbit. This recent FCC approval came after the mission was delayed to January from its initial launch date in December 2020. The orbital parameters of the Starlink satellites are a hot point of contention in the satellite industry. Other service providers, such as Amazon's satellite division, have objected that these satellites will interfere with the company's own systems. But the FCC said that the interference concerns raised by objectors are not implicated for these 10 satellites. These 10 satellites are part of the 348 polar Starlink satellites that SpaceX intends to operate at an altitude of 560 kilometers. According to SpaceX, sun-synchronous and polar orbit satellites will allow the constellation to serve customers and communities in high northern latitudes, possibly including the Arctic and Antarctic. Last week, SpaceX secured contracts for the launches of a commercial lunar lander mission, backed by NASA, as well as a privately funded satellite to track methane emissions. Intuitive Machines said it has chosen SpaceX to launch the IM-2 lunar lander on a Falcon 9 rocket no earlier than 2022. In November 2018, Intuitive Machines was selected by NASA as one of the nine companies granted the right to bid on the commercial lunar payload services program. Their lander, Nova C, is the first lander of this program, which is focused on the exploration and use of natural resources of the moon. This is the second launch contract between SpaceX and Intuitive Machine. The company's first lunar mission, designated IM-1, was previously contracted to launch on a Falcon 9 rocket as soon as 11 October of this year. Once landed on the moon, Nova C will deploy the Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment on the lunar surface. Delivering the Prime 1 drill to the moon is a precursor to look for water below the lunar surface. Besides the Prime 1 drill, two other NASA technology payloads will fly on the lander. Launching Nova C on a rocket with a proven record of reliability and outstanding value is an assurance to NASA and our commercial payload customers that Intuitive Machines is dedicated to sticking the landing in back-to-back -back moon missions," said Steve Altimus, President and Chief Executive of Intuitive Machines, in a company statement. In a separate announcement, MethaneSat, a subsidiary of Environmental Defense Fund, said it would launch its eponymous satellite on a Falcon 9 rocket in October 2022. The spacecraft will launch through SpaceX's small SAT rideshare program. The 350-kilogram satellite, being built by a team that includes Ball Aerospace and Blue Canyon Technologies, will perform high-resolution mapping of methane emissions, helping scientists and environmental advocates to identify sources of greenhouse gas from oil and gas industry facilities. SpaceX offers the readiness and reliability we need to deliver our instrument into orbit and begin streaming emissions data as soon as possible. We couldn't ask for a more capable launch partner," said Stephen Hamburg, MethaneSat project co-lead, in a statement. The heat probe developed and built by the German Aerospace Center and deployed on Mars by NASA's InSight lander has ended its portion of the mission. Since 28 February 2019, the probe, called the Mole, has been attempting to burrow into the Martian surface to take the planet's internal temperature to learn about the interior heat engine that drives Mars evolution and geology. The Mole is a 40-centimeter long pile driver connected to the lander by a tether with embedded temperature sensors. These sensors are designed to measure heat flowing from the planet once the mole has dug at least 10 feet. But the soil's unexpected tendency to clump deprived the spike-like mole of the friction it needs to hammer itself to the sufficient depth. After getting the top of the mole about 2 or 3 centimeters under the surface, the team tried one last time to use a scoop on InSight's robotic arm to scrape soil onto the probe and tamp it down to provide added friction. After the probe conducted 500 additional hammer strokes with no progress, the team called an end to their efforts. Fortunately, the team has learned a lot during their attempts that will benefit future missions that attempt to dig into the Martian subsurface. Now, let's discuss some of the significant Starship updates from the past week. SpaceX Starship prototype serial number 9 had undergone three static fire tests on a single day last week. The three-engine SN9 vehicle performed its second, third and fourth static fire tests in quick succession on January 13. The first test fire occurred at 12.30 p.m. local time, during which the three Raptor engines blaze briefly while the vehicle remains tethered to the ground. 
A few minutes after the first static fire, Elon Musk tweeted that SpaceX will conduct multiple static fires on the same day. The second static fire occurred at 2.22 p.m. and a third around 3.37 p.m. All three tests were incredibly short, mirroring SN9's first static fire, which ended earlier than SpaceX expected back on January 6. Musk soon confirmed that all the three static fires were successful. This is the first time ever that SpaceX has completed more than one static fires in a single day. Later, SpaceX detanked SN9 to safe the pad and vehicle for inspections. The next day Elon Musk tweeted that SpaceX needs to swap two of the Raptor engines, as they needed slight repairs. On January 15, Raptor serial number 44 got removed from serial number 9 and was transported back to the build site for repairs. Later a new Raptor arrived at the launch site as a replacement. Contrary to what Musk mentioned in his tweet, it appears that SpaceX will replace just one Raptor instead of two. Once the new engine is installed, SpaceX will conduct at least one more static fire before SN9 takes off to the skies in the coming days. A recent public notice from Cameron County ordered a temporary closure of State Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach from January 18 to 20. If all goes according to the plan, SpaceX will attempt the next triple-engine static fire and the first test flight of serial number 9 during these days. Recently an air separation unit was spotted at the Starship launch site. According to an FAA report, the air separation unit will be used to generate liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen required for launch operations. This air separation unit dehumidifies, liquefies, and separates air into oxygen and nitrogen. Once in the distillation tower, the liquid air is separated into oxygen, nitrogen, and argon by densities and pressures. The liquids are then pumped into the main storage tanks at the pad and is used for launch operations. Most of the nitrogen is then used in a separate heat exchanger to liquefy methane gas, and the rest of the nitrogen is stored for densification. Moving on to the build site, Starship serial number 10 got its aft fins installed last week. With this, SpaceX has completed the assembly of SN10 with the Raptor engine installation remaining. After the Raptors get installed, serial number 10 will be rolled out to the launch pad for its first high-altitude test flight. Serial number 11 is standing inside the mid-bay waiting for nose cone and aft fin installations. Another Starship prototype, serial number 15, is being stacked inside the mid-bay, next to SN11. It appears that SpaceX has either cancelled or skipped the production of prototypes serial numbers 12 to 14 and moved on to SN15. As of January 16, SpaceX has stacked together the common dome and mid-lock sections of serial number 15. According to Elon Musk, SN15 will be the first Starship prototype to receive major upgrades. SpaceX is currently building a Starship test tank, likely known as Starship SN7.2, at the construction site for pressure tests. The previous Starship test tank, serial number 7.1, was successfully pressurized to failure in a process known as burst testing in September 2020. Starship test tank SN7.2 seems to be very similar to SN7.1, but with one or two key differences. One of the crucial changes is the reduction in the thickness of the steel rings that make up the outer walls of the tank section. SpaceX is believed to have reduced the skin thickness by 25% in an effort to begin a weight reduction process, which is necessary for starships to eventually achieve their optimal payload goal of 150 metric tons to lower Earth orbit. A reduction from 4 mm to 3 mm steel rings could likely cut 5 to 10% from starships' empty weight. And for SpaceX, every gram of starship mass reduction translates directly into an extra gram of payload. Another key change is an upgraded thrust puck, which will be installed under the 7.2 test tank. Thrust puck is where the three central Raptor engines of Starship get attached. The new design simplifies plumbing complexity by allowing Starship's main fuel tank and header tanks to attach directly to and feed methane through the puck. Currently, it's unclear if a successful SN7.2 test campaign will result in similar reductions to the steel that makes up Starship tank domes and noses. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.